yeah, today I'll, I'll talk briefly about um, the BCM IO, which is a relatively new IO that we have now in Beam, uh, <clears throat> which allows us to, uh, to, to capture changes coming from databases. All right then. So first of all, what's the BCM? <clears throat> the BCM is an, from their definition, it's an open source distributed platform for change data capture. It's an open source project uh, that publishes utilities and, uh, and artifacts to run change data capture. Um, it's uh, it's a great project and it's uh, it's Apache license. It's uh, it's it's very cool. So you should you should check it out directly. Um, the way the BCM works is they publish uh, Kafka connectors, uh, Kafka Connect connectors for uh, um, to stream changes from databases, and so they they support multiple databases. Um, they also uh, pu publish utilities that allow you to run change data capture outside of uh, Kafka Connect. Um, all right, uh, now. Usually, the way the VCM runs is as a Kafka connector. So um, you'll have your your Kafka Connect deployment, um, and you'll deploy uh, the VCM source connector there. Um, in in this case, the connector would be let's say a MySQL source connector, and so it'll it'll connect to MySQL, uh, your data source here, and it'll track the the bin log, uh, the the log of changes of the database. <coughs> And it'll publish uh, those changes to different Kafka topics, one Kafka topic for each table. Um, and then, you know, classically, you would then, if you wanted to uh, analyze this data, you would, with Beam, you would connect to your to your Kafka cluster that is receiving this uh, this change data and and consume it from from there with Kafka IO. Um, now we, um, as we were considering. Uh, you know, change data capture and, and dealing with it in Beam, uh, we, we wanted to stop the assumption of, you know, anyone who, who uses this needs to have a Kafka cluster. Um, so last year we developed a solution to uh, where we would have a Beam pipeline on one side and we would be able to run Debisium without a cluster. Debisium would run as a binary in uh, the um as a container and we we also developed it so that it could publish um the the change data with uh, into pubsub uh, and so <coughs> um so yeah so the debisium connector runs as a binary it can run on kubernetes as a as, you know as a in a kubernetes node um and then instead of publishing data to uh, to Kafka, it would publish it to to Cloud PubSub, and so we would also transfer the schema information through schema registry. So, so we had a nice solution where your uh, your Beam pipeline could consume the data from PubSub, uh, and you didn't have to have any you know pre existing cluster or or, uh, or anything other than the oops, other than the <coughs> the Debisium, you know binary running separately from your pipeline. Um, and then we thought, okay, well, this still requires setting up a separate binary, making sure that it runs, uh, you know, make, maybe making it run on a Kubernetes cluster. Um, so then we wonder, okay, how can we, how can we simplify this deployment uh, e even further, right? <coughs> and so what we thought is uh, of this the BCM IO transform uh, or source. So we thought, okay, what about what if we could run the BCM inside Beam? Uh -huh. What if we could eliminate this Kafka requirement or this external binary requirement and instead run the, the BCM code inside your Beam pipeline. Um, and so that's uh, that's what we decided to do. Here we have <laughs> in this drawing, we have our Beam pipeline. And you know instead of going through PubSub or any kind of message queue, the Beam pipeline directly consumes the data from MySQL or any database uh, and the uh, and this data will be, you know, passed through and analyzed as part of the pipeline. Um, all right, and so, you know, we decided to do this. So some, something interesting about this is um, the BCM, as I said, publishes Kafka connectors, right? Um, 
And so to run this inside a Beam pipeline, we would basically have to run a Kafka connector inside a uh, inside a, a, a Beam transform. <coughs> so we <coughs> sorry we went through the design of you know how to do this. Uh, we used uh, a splittable do fund that takes care of everything. And so a splittable do fund, if uh, if you if you've looked into it, it contains an element and a restriction, right? And so the restriction represents the amount of work that has to be done. Uh, and the element, you know, it can sort of represent the, in this case, the connection to the database. And so <clears throat> our splittable do fun, it's called multi, you know, multiple times to keep consuming the data. And, uh, and in that restriction, it, it keeps some kind of state. So every time we try to consume new data from, uh, uh, from MySQL, what we do is we call process element on the splittable DoFund. And what this process element call does is first is instantiates a Kafka source. Uh, so in this case, it'll be a MySQL connector, Postgres connector, DB2 connector, et cetera. Um, and then it will restore this, the previous state of that source. What is the state for this? It's an offset in the bin log. So as we're consuming the change data from the database, we're um, we're reading further in a in a change file that belongs to the database, and we're we're keeping those offsets as the current state of the connector. And so, when when we restart trying to read, we have to restore the previous last offset that we read, right? And so, once we've restored that state, then the the Kafka connector that is running inside your Beam pipeline, it's uh, it's it's in the normal state that it that it needs to be to run as again as a Kafka connector, right? So what we do is we just call the connector as Kafka connect would. We we just continue reading elements uh, until you know we 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 don't see any more, and then we commit the latest offset and we allow these elements to go further downstream on the pipeline. Um, so this is yeah. So this is pretty cool. Um, I'm, I'm I'm pretty proud of this implementation. So when we commit the latest offset, what we do is we we store the restriction that's, that saves what is the latest offset that we saw um, for, for on the database history, right? <clears throat> so that's, uh, that's pretty cool. Um, now, we, um, <clears throat> the, the transform that we made available uh, in Java takes a format function. So it returns it, your format function. It takes uh, Kafka records. And it can format them into, you know, into whatever user record that you that you want. We have a default uh, data format. Uh, <clears throat> so the the data format by default is something like this. It's uh, it's based on JSON, uh, <clears throat> and so you know it'll come with some metadata, which includes the um, this the file in the bin log that it comes from, the database, the name of the database host. Uh, the version of the Debesium uh, connector, and the table that the data comes from. Uh, it also contains the before and after of the of the row that was modified. Um, so in this case, for instance, we have a before that is empty and an after that contains some data. Um, what that means is that this is a record that was inserted. So a record that wasn't there, then it was inserted, and after the change, it looks like this, right? <clears throat> Uh, all right then, so uh, I prepared a demo. Um, before we jump into the demo, uh, we'll quickly look at the pipeline. Now this is a Python pipeline. So this transform, again, is available for Python and Java. Um, for Python, it's available as a, as a cross-language transform. Um, now for this demo, um, we, we're running it just locally as a, as a simple batch pipeline that reads a total of 85 records. Um, here we have uh, the username of the, of the database, the password, the host, and the port. Um, so we read 85 records or change records from the database. And then you know, we just filter records specifically that belong to this table, and then we just print them. So that's, that's the demo. Um, now the demo, <laughs> I recorded a video, uh, just just to be ultra safe. Um, but I'll comment the video as uh, as it happens. Uh, this is the database, like I showed you. We read. Uh, 
we read from the database. Now, something worth mentioning is we have here a we have to define which which connector we want to use. In this case, we're using MySQL connector, but I, again, it has we have support for uh, for Postgres, DB2, um, and others. This is the BCM has. Uh, uh, we work through the BCM, right? So whatever the BCM supports, we support. Um, all right. Now here on this on this tab, we have our MySQL database running. It's just running in a in a container in a Docker container running locally. Um, now on this other terminal window, we uh, we're going to see the output from our transform because remember we were printing the um, the the records, uh, and here's where we're going to run the. Um, the pipeline. Now, because we're running this locally, it's just running as a batch pipeline. Uh, it consumes the 85 uh, change records that we're expecting, and then it uh, um, uh, and then it it finishes, right? Um, so you know, we start running the pipeline. Um, <clears throat> now we we see that the pipeline is starting. Um, all of these logs are coming from the BCM. Uh, and as we see on the output, the first output that we see is it's pulling a Docker container from the Beam Java SDK. This is because it's a cross-language transform. So the, the BCM IO will run on a Java container. Um, and now the pipeline is running, and it's waiting for change records, right? It consumed the initial change records. Uh, and so what we do now is we, <coughs> we connect to the database. Um, we're consuming the inventory database, if you if you notice from the transform. Here are the tables that are part of this database. Now, we were interested on the orders table, right? And so because right now the pipeline is running, it's waiting for, um, for all the 85 change records to come in. So what we're going to do is we're just going to produce uh, a bunch of updates. Uh, on the database, so that <clears throat> we'll be able to see, um, we'll be able to to make the pipeline finish. Um, so here we're just changing all of the orders at once a few times. Um, we set them to uh, eight, then to twelve, and now we the pipeline has finished. Uh, as and then we we can see here the output from the pipeline, right? <clears throat> now this output is again, as I mentioned earlier, just a history of changes coming from the pipeline. Um, <clears throat> so the uh, excuse me. So the first few changes are the initial setup of the database. Um, so um, this row, then this other row that I'm selecting, and the row above. Um, they're the, they're part of the order table. <coughs> I'm sorry. So in this case, we see that the before is none, and the after is the initial contents of the order table. What this means is, here we are initially inserting or creating insert events for the current status of the database. This is the backfill part of the database, <coughs> and then all the events coming after that are actual change events. So we can see that before we have uh, a quantity of two, and then we updated all of the orders to a quantity of 50. Um, so if we look at the next three, uh, three output elements that we have, uh, we can see here uh, order, uh, order number uh, 10002, then 10003 also being updated to a quantity of 50 from a quantity of two, and 10004 being updated to 50 from a, from a quantity of two. Sorry. Um, and yeah, so all of the changes that we see are all of the updates that we performed just earlier on our MySQL database, um, which is pretty cool. Um, we can see at the end, the final changes are the, the update from 8 to 12, which is the, the last update statement that we, that we issued. Um, Cool. Um, so that's it for the demo, the video demo, non-live demo. Um, here's, again, the pipeline, and and that's all it did, right? Um, cool. Oops. Uh, 
Uh, let's see. I need to stop this. Uh, and then, all right. So um, we want feedback about this transform. So what do you think of the API that we have in, in Python and Java? Um, as this transform is experimental, we're um, we're wanting feedback on the API because this is, I think this is a relatively new concept and a new transform. Um, so we want to think, okay, does this API that we have currently make sense or what are some, some improvements that we can make? So if you look at it and you think, oh, this doesn't make sense, I would like to see an API that, that behaves this way, please just let us know. Uh, uh, try out the performance. If you try out the transform, let us know what you think of the performance uh, and the behavior of the connector. Um, something that uh, happens with the connector due to the design. Let me go back to, um, to, the, to the rough implementation of it. Um, it could be that we're instantiating too many of these Kafka sources, and we're, uh, we're running too, um, too many connections to the database. And so um, we, we've done tests where we have this running for a while, and it works fine. Uh, but you know, I, I'd, I'd still appreciate uh, user feedback on this. Um, Perhaps have uh, once you you're running it for for a longer time. Um, how what do you think of how we deal with pipeline updates? Uh, does it work well? Um, how how does it deal with draining the pipeline? What about if we wanted to run this as a micro batch pipeline that you know does reads updates and then it stops uh, every now and then? Uh, anyway, any of these features that you think would be interesting, please let us know. Um, what do you think of the data format? Does the data format make sense to you, or does it not? Um, that will also be, be helpful for us. Um, and yeah, any any other issues, perhaps encoding of the data, dealing with multiple tables on the same P collection, all of that. If you have any feedback, we'll appreciate it. Um, now, if you're interested in trying the transform, um, it's uh, it's part of Beam now. Uh, so in Java, you would just uh, include this dependency on, on Maven uh, or Gradle, uh, which is Beam SDK's Java IO Debesium. Um, and you know the, the, the main class, uh, the main router class is Debesium IO on the, under this module. Uh, for Python, it exists under Apache Beam IO Debesium. Again, it's a, it's a cross-language transform, so it, it, uh, it will work on runners that support cross-language. Um, so you know, Flink, Spark, uh, Dataflow v2, and also on the local uh, Python runner, but only on Batch for now. Um, yeah, and uh, and then that's it, I guess. Do you have any issues, questions, feedback about the transform? Uh, please email the dev list or the user list. Um, now, if you um, because this works with the BCM. Uh, as you, one of the big parts of running this transform is working out how the connector will connect to the database, right? And so, um, yeah, so you, I also recommend you check out the Visium and the community. They have a very helpful community and a, and a nice indexed uh, chat room where you can come ask questions about any connection issues that you have with your database. And, um, and yes, yeah, so, um, yeah, that's it for me. Um, uh, I guess, uh, yeah, that's my last slide. So if anyone has any feedback or questions, uh, I'll, I'll be happy uh, to, uh, to answer them.